How do I thread a Sears Kenmore? How do I operate a Sears Kenmore? How do I do anything with a Sears Kenmore? It is so confusing. Hello, I'm Richard with Sewing Machine Tips and Tricks. And today we're gonna to go over the Sears Kenmore. This is uh, 158 series. It's actually, the model number is actually 158.14300. I'm gonna go over threading, how to operate it, and what all the levers and dials and everything everything is. Basically, I'm gonna go over the whole machine. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started, but tell me, what what uh, what model Sears Kenmore do you have? Uh, put it in the comments what model Sears Kenmore you have and any, any questions that you might have about it. Um, anyway, with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to first show you how to thread it um, and then once it's threaded, I'm going to go over the dials and everything and show you what they are, how they operate, and then how to perform, how to get the different stitches and perform different functions with it. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna thread this machine, but first I wanna to talk to you about it. So on any machine, uh, basically they, any machine makes a stitch the same way, so you're looking for the same components. From your thread pin or your thread spool, the first thing you're going to do is look for a thread guide. Then you're going to go to your uh, tension tensioner, tension assembly. Um, on this one, it's easy to see. On some of the newer ones, it's very hard to see. Then you're going to go to your take-up spring. I can show it to you on this one. On newer machines, uh, most of those you can't see it. And then you're going to go to your take up lever, then uh, down to your needle. And there's thread guides in between just about everything. So with that being said, we'll get started. The first things that you want to do before you thread your machine, turn your hand wheel so that your take up lever is up at the top. Um, most especially if it's one where it threads from the back and you slide it in, then you need to make sure that you need to make sure that it's up so that the thread will slide in. This one is not. This one you just thread it, but it's still going to make everything easier. Second, the second thing that you do on every sewing machine before you thread it is lift the presser foot. On this one, it's in the back, so you can watch the presser foot here, and I'm going to lift it. Okay. Make sure <clears throat> on any sewing machine that you lift this. The reason being is it opens the tension, dot, the tension discs. So you can see that these are tight right here. Right, in fact, the whole machine turn moves. I lift this up, and now it moves. You can hear it, and you can see it. You put it back down, and it's tight. All right, <clears throat> you lift your presser foot so that it takes the pressure off of your tension discs, and your thread will easily go in in between your tension discs. If your thread is not in between your tension discs, then you're gonna have a problem right off. Very important component. So first things first, lift the presser foot. Now I've used an orange thread, bright orange thread, so it's easy to see. Whoop. First thing that we're gonna do is we're going to go to the first um, thread guide. On this machine, the first thread guide is right here. Uh, there are some other models where you go from here to here, not on this one. This, this machine, your first thread guide is right here. And you're going to drop it in. Okay, so now, do not go here. This is for your bobbin winder. Okay? <clears throat> so, from here, you're going to go down. You're going to come around. Right here, you want to make sure that this thread goes in between those discs. You don't want it going back here. You don't want it going right here. It goes in between those discs. Okay, now, another thing. We're, we're in the tension discs. Now we're going to the take-up spring. This is your take-up spring right here. This little thing right here is your take-up spring. It's made to take up thread slack when your take-up lever comes down. Well, you can't see that, but the take-up lever's in this groove right here. When it comes down, it's made to take up some of that slack. So you're going to take this, and you're going to pull it all the way up. Not that far. You're going to pull it all the way up, and your thread's going to go around. 
just like this. Okay, if you need to, do just what I did right there. Grab your thread and pull so that your thread looks just like this. This is what you're wanting. You want it to come over this and underneath that take-up spring. See how it raises there? So then we're going to go through this thread guide, this next one. Then we're going to go to the take-up lever. Right here, thread this through right to left. Then we're gonna come down, go through the next take up guide. All right, excuse me, the next thread guide. This down here is a thread guide. Right here is a thread guide, okay? It's just gonna go in, if you need to hold it, and then pop in, okay? Just like that, it just has to go in there. That is a thread guide. Then your next thread guide is down at your needle on either side, whichever you, whichever side's easier for you, around and in, and then you're going to thread your needle. When you thread your needle, make sure that the end of your thread is nice, is got a clean cut on it, unlike that, use a good pair of scissors, and it will make it 100 times easier to thread. Then you're just going to thread it right through the, right through the eye. If you need to, you can put your presser foot down at this at this time, at this point. You're already in between your tension discs. All right, and then you're ready to uh, get sewing. So, this right here, may, this is uh, the tension for your presser foot, right? So, the further you push that, the more tension's on that. And if you push this, it'll come flying right back up. Takes all the, all the tension off. So, I can lift it easy here. If I push that down, it don't lift quite so easy. It's got a lot more tension. Um, the, reason, the reason for that is for depending on what materials you're using. If you are using... Uh, if you're using... A thick material or several layers of material um, then you want to put more pressure on it okay the more the thicker it is the more pressure you want so that it will properly feed if you don't have enough pressure on it and you have several layers the bottom layer is likely to move without the top layer moving so you want you want enough pressure so that everything moves or if you've got it all pinned together, then it's likely to just not move at all. If you're using, if you're sewing something really thin, like silk or something like that, then you want less pressure, just a little bit. The key thing is you do not want your feed dogs to tear up your material What or your fabric. You don't want your feed dogs to tear up your fabric. Whatever fabric you're using, obviously you don't want it damaged, so you when when you're setting this up and you're getting ready to sew make sure that you have a piece of test fabric to test the machine on so that you don't tear your fabric up or or mess it up right uh however because you want to make sure that it feeds right and you want to make sure that it sews right sews correctly but make sure that you use the you set it up the same as what you're actually going to be sewing so if you're sewing something that has two layers of fabric and um, some sort of filling in between, that's how that's what you need to test it on. Otherwise, your results may differ because it will take more pressure here for what you're actually sewing than one single lever, layer of, of fabric. So make sure that when you test, you test for exactly what you're sewing on. As well, your tension will come out different as well on one layer as opposed to several layers okay so then this is a thread guide obviously this is the little tensioner for your uh, bobbin winder for for winding a bobbin um, <clears throat> down here on your tension you know a, a normal setting for most sewing machines is between three and six if you set it on about four or five that's a good place to start. That's a good place to start testing at. And then see if you're making a proper stitch. See if it's stitching the way you want it to. If, if it's not, then you can adjust it. 
if you're pulling your your lower thread all the way up, um, then I would do two things. First of all, I would check the bobbin thread to make sure it's got tension on it. So you simply grab the thread and just pull a little bit. It don't have to have an extreme amount of tension. It just needs to have a little bit of tension and not just freely flow. Secondly, um, okay, so that's the first thing. Check this tension, make sure it's okay. Secondly, I would put the foot down and I'd pull on this to make sure that it's not just extremely, extremely tight, right? Make sure it's not over tight, it's not catching on something or whatever. Once you're done with that, then if it's just if it just feels really, really tight and it's pulling and your lower thread's coming up to the top, then just turn it back some. Turn turn that down a little bit and then try it again. Sew a little bit more. Now, if it's the other, if your if your upper thread is looping or just not pulling is looping on the bottom or just not pulling that lower thread up then again check this check your lower thread raise your pressure foot so that it's off pull it make sure that it's not stuck make sure that it's not extremely tight um, if it's stuck take it out see what you can see find out where it's stuck and then put it back in um, pull here put your put your Press your foot down, back down here, pull here. Make sure there's some tension. Make sure that uh, it's not just loose and falling off, basically just flowing with no tension. Make sure you have some tension. So if you've got a little bit of tension here, you've got a little bit of tension here, but it's still not doing right, then I would turn this up a little bit. You know, if you get if you, if you get this to five or six and it's still not sewing the way that it should, then you've probably got another. You've probably got another problem, and you need need to start investigating to see what the other problem is. Which I'm not going to go into in this video because there's a ton of possibilities. But um, um, at that point, it's probably not your tension, and you need to need to investigate some other options. Okay. Um, now moving over to the right. This right here. This is this determines whether you're doing just your regular stitching or your specialty uh, specialty or what I call designer stitches. All right, you can see that there's two different color stitches on here, right? There's your orange stitches and your white stitches. So if you want orange stitches, you're going to put this over on the, toward the orange dot. If you want the stitches there in white, you're going to turn that over to the white dot. Right, so depending on where what stitches what stitches you want to use is going to depend on where this sits. So, like this machine, although it's not real clear, it shows a zigzag or a heavy stitch. What that's telling you is if you want to use zigzag, then you're going to have it here. You can use it as a straight stitch too, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But if you want zigzag, you're going to have it here. If you want to, if you want a if you want a straight stitch or a heavy heavy straight stitch, you're gonna turn it over over like this. All right. So so far as getting the straight stitch, just a plain straight stitch. This is your stitch width here. Okay, the outside is your stitch width, and then of course this is your stitch selector. So you're gonna put your stitch width on that orange dot. Okay. And whether, then if you just want a regular straight stitch, you're gonna have it right there, okay? You're going to put, you're gonna have the this lever on orange, you're gonna have this dot on orange, and now you're gonna get a straight stitch. If you want a zigzag, all you're gonna do is turn this. As soon as you start turning it, you're gonna start getting a zigzag, to, and the more you turn it, the wider, the wider your zigzag is gonna be. Um, now, if you do this and you pop this over here, you're still going to get a straight stitch, but it's going to be a heavy straight stitch. So every stitch is going to be three stitches. So it's going to make it's going to make a stitch, move backwards, make a stitch, move backwards, make a stitch. 
So you're gonna put the same stitch in one place three times. And it's gonna move forward and it's gonna do the same thing, okay? Over, I'll, I'll show you that stitch in a minute so you can see the difference, see what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> all right, so then this is another type of zigzag or a designer stitch. Um, and the same here, this is a zigzag with spaces or a designer stitch, right? Um, so depending on which one you want, you're going to, you're going to, it's, there's only one spot for it, right? That's the only spot on each one. And then you're going to pop it over there if you want the, the orange stitch, which is a type of zigzag, or if you want this, uh, specialty or designer stitch, you're going to pop it over here. Um, so I know I'm repeating myself. I'm just trying to make sure that everybody understands. And it's the same here. You know, it's, as, as you can see, that pops back, it pops back. There's only one position. Okay, um, now, this is your reverse lever. Push it down, you'll go in reverse, let it off, and you'll go forward. Okay, next is your stitch length. So this is your stitch length. All the way to the left is your longest stitch. All the way to the right is your smallest stitch, which you're actually not moving at all, right? Um, so this, this is kind of weird. It starts at zero goes to 12, and then we start down. 10, eight, six. So it's kind of strange. Six is your largest stitch. When you get to 12, you're doing a smaller stitch, and then zero, you're, you don't have a stitch at all, right? It's uh, the smallest that you can have, which is, it's not moving. This is for your feed dogs. Um, to the right on the U is for your feed dogs up. Move it to the left, and now your feed dogs are down right? Um, this is your power switch right here. Power on, power off, right? And yeah, it, if that's off, it won't run, it won't do anything. And then of course, this is your hand wheel right here. All right, before we go over the bottom winder, uh, real quick, if you got value out of this video, if it's helped you, like the video and subscribe to the channel um, as well. If you know of anybody who would get value out of this, then uh, share it with them uh, so it can help them. And as well, if you'd like to know more about repairing machines, if you'd like to know more about small repairs and how to take care of your machine, then I have a guide uh, in the description of this video. Um, it's $9.95 and it's, it is absolutely packed full of information. So if that's something that you think that would help you, then go ahead and go check it out. All right, let's go ahead and get on with winding a bobbin. Okay, so now we're gonna wind the bobbin. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do is release the clutch. So you're gonna grab the hand wheel with one hand and then the clutch with the other, and it's gonna to twist towards you. You hear the hear it stop, that's a screw that's in there that stops. So you're just gonna twist it so it stops. It should get between a third and a quarter of a turn, enough so that the hand wheel's loose and it doesn't turn the doesn't turn the or move the needle. Then you're going to on this machine. Not all of them are the same, but on this machine, you're going to loosen that thread so that you don't end up with a total mess. You don't want these. You don't want you don't want the two threads messing up. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it on this side of the tensioner and then around so it crosses. Um, some machines show to do that, some don't. It is a good practice because it will keep your thread from coming off of that tensioner. If you've uh, wound many bobbins on many different machines, you've probably had that happen a few times. When you're winding the bobbin, the thread comes out of the tensioner and then you, you wind up with a mess. So um, if you cross it like that, then that won't happen. Now, all right, so we've done the clutch. I've ran the bot the thread through the top of the bobbin. Now I'm going to engage, I put the bobbin on the bobbin winder. Now I'm gonna engage the bobbin winder and then just step on the foot feed. I got it going a little bit. Now, um, I stop, you don't have to, but I stop 
a little ways in and I cut this off. That does have to be cut off. That does have to be cleared, but you don't have to do it until you're done. That's just the way I do it. It makes another step, but anyway. All right, then you finish lining your bobbin. Okay, I've got enough on there. Um, but as the, as it fills up, the thread pushes this bobbin winder out and eventually, in fact, it was just almost there. I just barely move it and it, it was almost there. So it will kick it out on its own, but you fill it up to however full you're comfortable with it. Um, and then cut your thread and you can take that thread off just so that uh, you don't end up with a big mess. Pull that out. <coughs> All right, now we're going to actually thread the bobbin. You're gonna hold the bobbin so that the thread comes off to the right. Top, comes off the top to the right. And you're gonna take your bobbin case, put it inside it, and then you're gonna take it through that groove around and you're gonna pull. So if I can get it to, okay, you want it in the center of that groove. You want it to get past that little, uh, that little stop right there. Okay, and you want it in the center. If you don't get it there, then it's gonna come out. The thread's gonna come out of that tensioner. This is the tensioner, okay? Now, <clears throat> there's several ways of doing this. The easiest way is to grab it and just make sure it's got a little bit of tension. Pull, make sure it's got some tension. You don't want it real, real tight, okay? You don't want this real tight. Make sure it's got a little tension. As long as it's got a little tension, you'll be good. Um, what you do want, you know, I, I had you hold it a certain way for a certain reason. So I pull this thread to the left and that bobbin turns to the right. Reason is because you're sewing very fast and then you suddenly come to a stop. With it going the opposite way, it puts a little bit more uh, friction between the bobbin and the bobbin case and it helps keep from making a huge mess inside. In other words, it helps keep the bobbin from continuing to spin freely, um, making a huge mess. Okay, so this little finger goes up just like that, right? And then you've got a slot right here that that finger goes into. Here's a trick for you. If you're going to be trying to put this in, if you're going to be trying to put the bobbin case in downward, if you will pull this out like you're going to open it and hold it open, that bobbin won't fall, well, that bobbin won't fall out because it's holding in there, okay? It's being held in there, so it won't fall out. So make sure that finger's up. Make sure you don't get the thread inside it. <clears throat> put it in. And then make sure that the finger's in that slot. Make sure that it's all the way down and uh, locked in there, all right? And we're going to, I'm going to pull the, pull the uh, bottom thread up. I gotta tighten that clutch up. All right, I'm gonna pull that bottom thread up. Just like that. Make sure it's to the back. Okay. All right, now we're gonna sew with it. <laughs> Always start out slow in case you have problems that uh, you don't wind up with a big mess. Bring it all the way up so that it'll let go on the bottom. If, it, if the bottom hadn't let go, then just move the hand wheel back and forth. Okay. And so you can see there, we've got a pretty nice stitch. It, it's wide, it's a big stitch, but overall it's a nice stitch. See if I can get a little light on it there. Okay. So you can see the lower stitch coming up a little bit. And you can see the upper stitch there. 
uh, on the bottom a little bit. You should be able that unless you've got really really thick material, you should see it a little bit. You don't want you don't want to completely see it. You want it you want it mating inside the material, so you can just barely see the top on either side. Okay. Um, all right, now let's do a zigzag. <laughs> okay. So. Now all I've got to do to do a zigzag is uh, turn my stitch width all the way. All right, now I'm ready to do a zigzag. And again, I'm going to start slow in the event that I have any problems. Just like that. Okay, and I want to make my stitch length a little shorter. And again, you can see the top of it looks good. Let's see what the back looks like. All right, so it's pulling the it's pulling the upper stitch a little bit. That's not a huge deal, but um, um, it could possibly be problems in certain cir circumstances. That's not un unusual for that to happen. All you need to do is tighten your tension up a little bit. Okay, that that's a common thing to happen. If it sews good on a straight stitch, it may not sew on the same tension. It may not do a good zigzag. So just increase your tension. We're gonna do the zigzag with flats first. Okay. Now, I'm going to flip this over to the white and we're gonna do this designer stitch. Watch this fabric. See how it moves back and forth? <laughs> okay. Stopped there because I thought I had a problem, but I didn't. All right, so now we started out with this funky funky zigzag and I had you, you don't have to have your stitch width on maximum for this but I did um, you need it on max for this one for this design right here and you can see like I said I call it a bridge I don't know what it is but you can see how well well it did all I had to do was flip flip the flip this little toggle from orange to uh, white right um, and then I guess the only thing we haven't done is reverse. So I'm gonna put it on uh, just a straight stitch. So now we'll do the reverse. Okay, so we got all this set for a straight stitch. We'll run it. And reverse, and forward. All right, there it is. All good. Yep, looks good. All right, so there it is. Um, if y'all have any questions, then put it in the comments. Let me know. Let me know what questions you have. Um, if you'd like me to discuss another Kenmore with you, let me let me know. And as soon as I get one in to work on i will see about uh getting it getting it on on video as well um thank you if you know if if you got value out of this if you like it then please like and subscribe um as well if you know of somebody that could use this video if you know of someone who could benefit from this video then please share it with them it, it will help them and it will help help my channel y'all have a great day and thank you very much